Okay, so we are going to go ahead and read uh, our first excerpt uh, in our Native American unit. This is from the Iroquois Constitution. This is the only nonfiction work that we're going to be reading in this unit. Um, so if we look over to the side here, We have some good background information. I'll leave that to you to read. We're going to get right into the text. Um, what we're doing here is we're focusing on visible imagery and how it helps communicate the theme of a, oh my goodness, what have I done? A reverence for nature, right? All right, how does visual imagery help communicate that in this work. Let's read. He says, I am Dekanawita, and with the Five Nations Confederate Lords, I plant the tree of the great peace. So right off the bat, the tree of the great peace, they're using a natural element, something of nature, a tree, to represent the solidarity and the strength of their unity. Right off the bat, reverence for nature. I named the tree of the uh, the tree of the great long leaves. Under the shade of this tree of the great peace, we spread the white soft the soft bright feathery down of the globe thistle as a seat for you. Okay, again, natural elements. As a seat for you, Adar, Adadar Ho. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but that's okay. If we look down here, that's the chief confederate lord of the Onondaga. And your cousin lords. We place you upon those seats spread soft with the feathery down of the globe thistle. There beneath the shade of the spreading branches of the tree of peace. There shall you sit and watch the council fire of the confederacy of the five nations and all the affairs of the five nations shall be transacted at this place before you. So again, a council fire is something ceremonial, part of their um, structure that again is a natural element. Roots have spread from the tree of the great peace. One north, um, one to the east, one to the south, one to the west. The name of these roots is the great white roots and the nature is peace and strength. So again, they're using the roots of the tree to symbolize how peace is spreading throughout their land, another natural element. If any man or nation outside the five nations shall obey the laws of the great peace and make known their disposition to the lords of the confederacy, they may trace the roots to the tree. And if their minds are clean and they are obedient and promise to obey the wishes of the confederate council, they shall be welcomed to take shelter beneath the tree of the long leaves. All right, look, they take shelter beneath this natural element. We place at the top of the tree of the long leaves an eagle who is able to see far. If he sees the distance, if he sees in the distance any evil approaching or any danger threatening, he will at once warn the people of the Confederacy. So the eagle being a symbol of, you know, protection, right? The lookout. The smoke of the Confederate fire shall ever ascend and pierce the sky so that other nations may be allies, may see the council fire of the great peace. All right, the smoke of the fire now, another element that they're bringing in to represent their peace. Whenever the Confederate Lord shall assemble for the purpose of holding a council, the Onondaga Lord shall open it by expressing their gratitude to their cousin lords and greeting them, and they shall make an address and offer thanks to the earth where men dwell, to the streams of water, the pools, the springs and the lakes, to the maize and the fruits and the medicinal herbs and trees, to the forest trees for their usefulness, to the animals that serve as food and give their pelts for clothing, and to the great winds and the lesser winds, to the thunderers, to the sun, the mighty warrior, to the moon, to the messengers of the creator who reveal his wishes, and to the great creator who dwells in the heavens above, and who gives all the things useful to men, and who is the source and the ruler of health and life. Then shall the Onondaga lords declare the council open. So even here, like in the opening ceremony, so to speak, that you are literally giving thanks to nature. Right? Put that here. They're literally reverencing, or revering, I should say, nature. Breaking it up here. All lords of the five nations confederacy must be honest in all things. It shall be a serious wrong for anyone to lead a lord into trivial affairs. For the people must never hold their lords and for the people must ever hold their lords in high estimation out of respect to their honorable positions. When a candidate lord is to be installed, he shall furnish four strings of shells, or wampum, one span in length, bound together, one at each end. Such will constitute the evidence of his pledge to the Confederate Lords that he will live according to the Constitution of the Great Peace and exercise justice in all affairs. Oops, wrong one. Even here, 
right? They use a natural element. They use shells to represent their pledge of allegiance, so to speak, to this confederation. When the pledge is furnished, the speaker of the council must hold the shells string in his hand and address the opposite side of the council fire. And he shall commence his address saying, now behold him. He has now become a Confederate Lord. See how splendid he looks. An address may then follow. At the end of it, he shall send the bunch of shells to the opposite side, and they shall be received as evidence of the pledge. Then shall the opposite side say, again, with this, the shells representing that pledge, we do now crown you with the sacred emblem of the deer antlers. Again, being crowned with a natural element, deer antlers, the emblem of your lordship. So literally, this natural element is a symbol of authority, lordship. You shall now become a mentor to the people of the five nations. The thickness of your skin shall be seven spans, which is to say that you shall be proof against anger, offensive actions, and criticism. Your heart shall be filled with peace and goodwill, and your mind filled with a yearning for the welfare of the people of the Confederacy. With endless patience, you shall carry out your duty, and your firmness shall be tempered with tenderness for your people. Neither anger nor fury shall find lodgment in your mind, and all your words and actions shall be marked with calm deliberation. In all your deliberations, in the Confederate Council, in your efforts at lawmaking, in all your official acts, self-interest shall be cast into oblivion. Cast not over your shoulder behind you the warnings of the nephews and nieces, should they chide you for any error or wrong you may do. But return to the way of the great law, which is just and right. Look and listen for the welfare of the whole people, and have always in view not only the present, but also the coming generations, even those whose faces are the ground, the unborn of the future nation." So you can see throughout this entire text, and this is just an excerpt from a much larger um, uh, uh, narrative, that this reverence for nature, idea that you respect nature, is repeated over and over again. So here we see how visual imagery develops the theme of a reverence for nature. Why isn't that?